three and two and one. Thank you viewers for joining. Uh have a guest today. Uh I'd like to say this uh road started with uh with a viewer the woods, I believe it's the woods. It's uh Avignat. He sent four books. The Negro Question, uh, one through four. Um, and as we were getting into these books, we heard a radio show that was reading from these books, and we heard about book six. And when I was online looking up book six, I found out about book seven, the seventh seal. So as <laughs> we found all these different books, they were all from the same author, the author Lee Cummings. Ladies and gentlemen, Lee Cummings. Hi, Lee. Hey, hey, what's going on? Oh, your books all over my home, all over the minds of the people that listen to the videos that are produced by us. Uh, we're excited to have you. Uh, to, to, I'm excited to be on. Um, we have a YouTube channel claims to have 16,000 viewers. When a video goes up, we get about 2,000 viewers within the first couple of days. A lot of these viewers have been hearing about your books uh, for at least six months because we heard a radio show that uh, started per, uh, broadcasting uh, some of what uh, is read in there, uh, maybe January of 2019. So, okay. So there are some people that might have come over here, so they've known about your books for at least a year. And with no further ado, is there anything that you'd like to open up with? No, I just, you know, if you, uh, I, I uh, feel glad to be on the show. Uh, I'm available to answer, answer any questions that, uh, that pertain to, uh, to the research, to my research. And so uh, I'm ready to get started. All right, um, and I would like to first ask, uh, would you like to discuss uh, your education? Um, well, my background, well, I, you know, I, I, I went to Purdue University, the Big Ten. I graduated uh, from Chicago State University. I got a degree in accounting, so I didn't go to school for writing. I didn't, uh, uh, I don't have a, I don't have a background in writing. I just uh, started doing research probably 20 years ago. And then one day while I was sitting at a computer, I heard a voice. And it told me to write a book. And so I wrote, I wrote the first, I wrote three books in, in I think, two or three months. And, uh, and uh, you'd be surprised. Some of the best books, are, uh, some of my best selling books are the first two books. Uh, who am I, part one, who am I? And uh, the African slave ships that came from Judah, part two. So uh, I went to grad school. Uh, I was trying to get a master's in accounting. I worked as an accountant. I owned a couple of collection agencies. And uh, uh, what happened to me was wisdom, wisdom killed me because the, the more, uh, the deeper the research became, I, I pulled away from the economic sector to do the research and to write the books. And then that, 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 that basically sums it up. Wow. Wow. Well, that is, that's, that's cool, man. You know, so big 10 life, man. Uh, that's, that's, that's gotta be pretty good. Um, I mean, exciting, you know, um, you know, uh, can I ask how old you are? Yeah, I'm, I'm in my fifties. Okay. So you came from a, from an exciting, uh, uh, sports era. You know, um, exactly. right. The big, yeah. So, so you know, I, 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 I understand. You know, Purdue. Wow. I mean, that's that's cool. I've I've been on road trips, uh, and and happened to be in uh 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 where were we at? We were uh in blue uh Blue Devil country during the uh during the Big Ten. So, uh, the Carolinas. All right, so so yeah, and, I, and you know, I played uh, I played professional basketball in Australia and in Venezuela. I had a trial with the Milwaukee Bucks, NBA, that didn't pan out. So, you know, this is what I'm doing now. And I'm glad about it. Right on, right on. Um, 
No, I mean, my, my dad was a football coach and groomed me for football. You know, that was the life of, of, of a lot of us. So this is exciting to see uh, how, you know, you you started uh, in, in in sports, I presume, and then, in, you know, you're, you're, you're going to school for accounting and you end up being one of the uh, most revealing writers of history of our generation. Um, you know, from my perspective, uh, you know, I, I, I like to... Well, I'm, pre I'm appreciative. It's like, when you go back and look at the history of the type of books, uh, and I don't even know if I'm phrasing that correctly, but you go back and look at the history of the type of books that have been written in a particular subject or the genre that I write in. And I remember in 2011 when I first published the first book, there weren't that many books out there. And then I started getting real crafty uh, with the covers. <clears throat> and then you start noticing, all of a sudden, books were popping up everywhere, you know, about being Israel. And once I saw that, I started uh, branching off. I started writing different types of books, like you mentioned, uh, Part 6. Well, you know, Part 4 was The Missing Link, and Part 4 showed uh, showed uh, uh, how uh, the kings of Europe were, were black all the way up until 1800, uh, uh, probably beginning, of, or probably near after, right after, The Europeans, uh, the Europeans tried to have the information with the genetic, with the, uh, the DNA information that was coming out of Europe, the, uh, the untampered artifacts, the eyewitness accounts, the manuscripts, and pieced it together. We found 300 years of missing history, and that 300 years began with King James or the Stuart Kings. Uh, I think I was the first one to make the association of me. That in Part Six, I proved that. Uh, uh, I think part six is called the, uh, the 13 Black Colonies. That's what we most had to think about the titles. But uh, in the, uh, the 13 Black Colonies, I show where the ships manifest, uh, that the Jacobites, uh, there's an eyewitness description of the Jacobites. And nobody called themselves Jacob but Israel. And they brought me uh, uh, the ships to come into the colonies in 1715, 1745. They are described as swarthy, brown skinned, ruddy, and black people. And uh, King James, uh, King Charles the First, King Charles the Second, they were all described as black men. In fact, uh, Part Six has a charter, a couple of charters. One is a South Carolina charter that was named after uh, King Charles the Second. There's an image on the original charter that showed depicts him as a black man. Also, the Rhode Island charter has an uh, uh, image of King Charles the Second, uh, Second depicted as a black man. And, and, and why am I? bringing this up in, in, in the discussion because the, all of us, we went to some government-sponsored school, public school, grammar school, and college. They talk about, uh, 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 they give, uh, they give uh, glossed over information about the colonies, but they never produce the original charters. And there's a reason for that, because the original charters show uh, King James and his being black men, and it also details, gives us specific instructions as to the intent of uh, the, uh, the origination of uh, the plantations or the colonies. They had nothing to do with slavery, and uh, the verbiage in there says that the only reason they came was to uh, uh, to extend the kingdom of God to the inhabitants and uh, the black inhabitants of America. And that is a true statement. I hope I didn't talk too much. No, no, no. This is, uh, I, could, I, could, I couldn't ask for anything better. Um. I uh I got a uh interesting thing. Um can I can I read something to you? Sure, um, go ahead. It's uh I believe it's from book six, it's from page uh sixty. Um and it's uh the thirteen colonies part one, author Helen Is uh at Islin uh, excuse me. Ansley Ansley Smith. And okay, thank you. Uh, it states, excuse me, I just lost my place. It states, uh, why should the what page are you on again? Pardon, 60. What page are you on again? Page 60. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the Palestine Moors be suffered to, uh, 
swarm into our settlements. They will never adopt to our customs any more than they can obtain our complexion. All of the uh, Africa, Asian, and American are swarthy black. Russian, Italy, Spain, France, Swedes, and the Germans are black. The principal whites are made up of the Saxons, the English. It skips down. Uh, 1751, the black German King George II is sitting on the throne of England. The next page, it says, Benjamin Franklin said that the Germans were swarthy and he did not lie. The black German King George was the founder of Georgia and other 12 colonies were founded and the black Stuart Highlander Kings. Uh, and, uh, What's the question? I wanted to know, uh, right, uh, 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 it, it, on two pages later, King George was black German. He was not a Scot. He had no problem enslaving the black Scots since they were not his people. I, my question is, do you have problems uh, uh, with people that are Moors because this is published? No, of course not. Uh, that's a good question because I run into that question a lot. Uh, people, the, the, the word Moor, uh, the word Moor means it, it's an ancient, it's a medieval term. And all it means is what? Black. It's not an ethnic group. It's not a national. It's not a. It's not a particular country. <laughs> it, that was that was that was code word for black. So people say they said, well, the Moors are all are they were always in America. Okay, that's true because what the Moors are, they're black people. So like when you see a white man or Anglo-Saxon or European in this country, he says, and his last name is Jack Moore. It's impossible that his name could be Jack Moore. Why? Because a Moore is a black man. That just goes to show you that they even took those last names. But to answer your question, I have no problem with the Moors because technically, based on the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the word is an adjective to describe a color. And in fact, in this same book, on uh, part seven of Swarthy Memoirs, when uh, uh, I think his name was Private, uh, what's his guy's name? Anyway, there was an eyewitness account of uh, the Battle of Yorktown. And uh, the private, uh, one of the soldiers, he was a black German soldier. And he describes uh, the five armies that fought at Yorktown. He, at Yorktown. Now, Benjamin Franklin said in 1751 that, and this is this is dealing with uh, the question. So in 1751, Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin writes that the Spanish, the Italians, the Russians, the Germans, the Swedes, uh, and the French are black or Well, in 1751, we had a, a private by the name of uh, Private Floor, F L O H R. That you can find that in the uh, in. Uh, the Swarthy Memoirs, Part 7. And he describes all the uh, contestants, or the battle contestants, or the participants uh, at Yorktown. He said that when they got up the next day and they went out to view the bodies, he said, everybody, all the uh, corpses, were Morin, M-O-O-R-E-N. Morin is the word, uh, derived or, uh, from the word more. What armies were at Yorktown, these corpses? They were French bodies. The French, the Spanish, the Haitians, the Colonial Army, the British Army, and the German Army were present that day. The Scots, and the Welsh, and the Brits. And this private eyewitness account was well, they were all Moran or they were all black. So the word itself, if you know what the word means, guess what? It's an indicator of just how bad we've been lied to historically. Wow. So to answer the question, I know that's a long answer. I have no problem with the Moors. Because if I have a problem with them, I have a problem with myself. Because I'm a moron. I'm black. Well, I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, do you, do you, um, have you ever heard of uh, the L, uh, how do I say that? The, the, uh, well, let, let's, let me ask you a question real quick uh, before, before I go there. Um, 
your books, the writings of your books, have they changed your life? Uh, positive, negative, uh, versus your career? Uh, Good question. How did it change my life? Well, you know, it's like, that's a good question. It's like when you come into the knowledge of the truth, it does change you because uh, you, you start looking for a platform to teach the truth. Right now I'm involved in, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm teaching uh, Korean Hebrew uh, at a Hebrew, uh, Hebrew Israelite school. Uh, to, uh, Hebrew, actually, it's not a Hebrew Israelite school, it's a Hebrew academy. So it, how has it changed me? I'm a little bit, uh, I'm somewhat disgruntled by a so-called school system because I know it's all a lie. And, uh, and uh, it just changed, it just, it just gave me a different outlook on life that, you know, sometimes you feel like your labor and your effort and, and, and the work that you put in, but it's, sometimes you feel like, man, it's a waste of time. And then I get, and then I stumble into a person, to somebody like you. And then I realized, hey, then I then I am actually making a difference, and that the books are really making a difference. So that's why you know what I mean. Oh yeah, I uh, <laughs> yeah. Can I share something personally with you? I mean, it's sure. it's actually publicly. I mean, I have viewers and stuff, and for the most part, they already know this stuff. Um, so again, I uh found um your information um from listening to a radio broadcast. Um, at the same time, I was starting to study uh, the biblical tribes because uh, I, I do have another question, and I should have asked this before I went into this. Um, and as, Go ahead. well, okay, uh, a lot of your writings deal with biblical tribes. Do you consider yourself or have any known ancestry to any biblical tribe? Well, you know, we, anybody, you know, if you've got part two, uh, there should be, there's a map on the front cover of the page, uh, on the front cover of the book. Right. That shows that the original name of the slave coast it was what? The Kingdom of Judah. So we know that anybody that came into North America via the North Atlantic slave trade, that's either, that's got to be who? Got to be Judah. So we know who we are based on that, but I want to, I want to issue a disclaimer right quick. Just, you know, we talk about being Israel. You know, we've had a couple of incidents lately uh, around the country where uh, uh, these alleged Hebrew Israelites uh, shot and killed or committed uh, uh, horrible acts of, uh, of violence. Atrocities. And uh, the, question, the question was asked to me. They said, well, are these Hebrew Israelites? You know what I said? My response was, they are Hebrew Israelites as long as they keep the Ten Commandments. And one of them is, thou shalt not kill. So my, my response is, you know, if these people, if they're Hebrews, they're, they, they're Hebrews as long as they keep the commandments. If they don't keep the commandments, they're not with us. So we don't we don't promote that. We promote what? We promote salvation, and uh, we promote identity and awareness. That's what we're about. All the other stuff, man, that we, we're not, we're, this is what we're about. We're about including all the sons of Adam. It's an inclusive concept, and uh, it's not about uh it's not about practicing violence against other races of people. That's not of God. That's the devil. Well, that is a very wonderful answer. Thank yeah, you. That, but I'm not <laughs> but that is a real answer, brother. Because, yeah, it's, hey, it's, me and you, you know, the question, I don't even know you, but the question would be asked, do you know the brother? I said, well, if he keep the commandments, I know him. But if you don't keep the commandments, I don't know the man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I understand. Truthfully, I preach that. We preach yeah. the Ten Commandments. I make T-shirts. That's what we believe, man. We don't believe that you know, the Bible says, slay not the innocent. How can you walk through earth and say you, you're a Hebrew? Or, you know, and, and just me on the subject, there's another thing that comes out that uh, jumps off the pages. You know, like, um, every time uh, one of these guys commit a stunt, Yeah. It's an attack, but they, they begin to attack all the Hebrews around the world. But, so I asked the question. I said, well, when, uh, when a Catholic priest uh, sodomizes a little boy, do they attack every Catholic? Do they say all Catholic priests are, sod are, are, are pedophiles and sodomizers? No, they don't. So why does the media take a different approach when it comes to something that's done 
in the name of a Hebrew Israelite. Now, Jeffrey Dahmer, eight human beings down in Milwaukee, did they say all uh, white people that went to his church or worked at his job were, fl- were cannibals and flesh eaters? No. Uh, John Wayne Gacy. Of course not. Uh, 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 came from a European church, or what you call white churches, and he, he killed uh, homosexual males and hid them in the crawl space in his building. No one said that they were that any organization that he was attached to was just like him. So I think that, uh, and, and I hate to have used those examples, but they have to be said. No, those, are, because, those are perfect you know examples. I mean? Those are perfect examples. Yeah, you know, they have to be said. You know, like, uh, we got people running around here pulling the stunt and saying they went out. They're not. He was like, we don't speak with each other's wives. We don't commit adultery. We don't lie. We don't steal. Yeah. We don't disrespect our parents. Well, like uh, to, we don't, we don't bow down the statues. We walk in the tent. We keep the Sabbath there. Sure. So anybody that's not keeping the commandments, they're not with us. Right. Can I, uh, let me, let me, let's go back a little bit. Because uh, this is a very yeah. crucial thing that you've said. Because people really don't understand it. We've gone through this Bible and through these uh, strong concordance with these words. And we understand to a degree, but people don't want to admit that this is what's going on and what your books have done. It proves what I preach because again, if you are the European Jacob and you enslave these pirates, then you're held accountable for the acts that they do because you stole 500 years from them. And this is our punishment as these books prove. They don't hold themselves accountable because they know they got it from whichever person enslaved them and did this to them and encoded it with them. It doesn't matter what they did when they were pirating. We're beyond that now because they do not have on their head what you call the crown of the children of Israel. Well, the problem that they have and they take it personal, but it's not personal. You know, like, one thing you're going to find out when you start teaching the truth, one of the tricks of the people that are, that are distorting the truth is that uh, uh, that you're racist. The moment you begin to uh, teach the truth, what they'll do is they, they, gotta, they have a mechanism called racism, and, they, and they'll try to use that to keep the truth from being promoted. So you'll say, well, that's racism, or that's Afrocentric Christianity. No, you cannot... You cannot put a color on the truth. The truth doesn't have a color. Now, if the people that are in Jerusalem claim to be Israel, we got a problem. All the artifacts that's coming out of the ground, the artifacts of black Jews, 18th dynasty, 12th dynasty. You go and uh, you look at uh, the Negro Question Part 2, uh, not only do we have uh, the artifacts, but these artifacts came from major museums, the British Museum, shows black Jews. Uh, the Levure Museum in France, uh, France, black Black Jews, right. the Cairo Museum, the tombs of the pharaohs, and so the people in the the, the, uh, the European Jews who call themselves Israel, a they don't look like the artifacts. B they don't fit the eyewitness description of what a Jew looks like. C they don't even have the correct uh, alphabet. So you know they they uh, when they see me uh, doing research at Starbucks, they are always ask the question. <laughs> I went came inside of the. Uh, uh, Restaurant and say, well, what problem do you uh, Hebrews have uh, with the Jews in Jerusalem? I said, we don't have a problem with you guys. I said, listen, you got a charter in 1947-48. They gave you the land. I said, we don't have a problem with that. I said, oh, the thing we're interested in is teaching our people the truth about themselves. I said, we have no problem with these guys. You know why? Because they want what they want to do is they want to push you into a, they want to push you into a corner. Well, you have a racist comment or a racist thought. Now, guess what that does? That kills all the work that we've been trying to do to what? To eliminate our people. So we we cannot fall prey to that. You know, uh, somebody leading you down the road of racism. That's not what we're about. That kills that kills the message. We don't care. They got the land. God bless them. We'll get the land back when the Lord comes back. That's great. Um. Like I, I, that's that's interesting. You get so so much inter, interaction. See, uh, we're we we've 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 covered. Uh, in, I've been on on here about eight years. Um um, we've we've had a lot of different viewers. Uh, uh, 
again, when when we fell into the uh, the 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 line of your books, we have already been studying the uh, images of black kings in the European museums, and uh, what you had done from the books is you have separated this time in uh, our mind, um, and we we now see that. Uh, the term British means uh, uh, what we call Negro. We understand that they've been shipped over here as indentured servants. We understand that their mentality was to marry uh, into the land. We understand that most of the uh, people that view have checked their ancestry or checking their ancestry. They, they know that uh, one or uh, of their descendants, again, going back five generations, that's 32 people, they know at least one of their descendants are off the boat and one of their descendants is of the land, depending on which Indian group they are. So the viewers, uh, they're very educated uh, with the world, especially to okay, the... Let me interject, and I apologize. I don't mind. This is something that I want you to contemplate. Sure. See, when people say uh, uh, indigenous, uh, like, we know that the American Indian or the indigenous people were black. Benjamin Franklin tells you that. He said in 1751, all of America was black. And you can find that statement. It's, uh, he wrote an essay in 1751 called America is a Land of Opportunity. It's, it's, it's right now it's at the, uh, the Copyright Office uh, for the United States. It's a legitimate document. Mr. No disputed yet. Have you but ever? To make a long story short, you and I, we're considered Americans, right? Uh, no. Um, one second, yeah, one mean, second. We were born in America, so they list us as, what, U.S. citizens? U.S. Right? citizens, right, but that's completely... Okay, now, hold on, now, check this out. I want more for with this. Now, not only are you a, a U.S. citizen, but you are indigenous because you were born in the land. Now, why am I saying that? Because you got to remember something, brother. We're the original colonists. And by us being the original... We, see, this is, where, this is where the 13 black colonies takes you. You end up with what? Being the original colonists. Now, who was here when we got here? The indigenous blacks. So the real history has what? Real history has black King James or the black Scots come into the land in 1609. When they came into the land down at the Plymouth, the black Indians were here. What did we do? We didn't enslave them. One of the uh, charters, uh, King James says, or King Charles says, if any of the indigenous people want to come uh, on their own free will with you, let them. It was free will, not slavery. Right. So you had two black people interacting. The black uh, Scots, that, uh, and what we did was we started buying land. We didn't take land, we bought land. So so the people that were born in the land became what? They became what? Indians. Right. Um, so, so, so some of us, <laughs> some of us, especially the Negroes in the North, they were never slaves. They were always free, right. indigenous people. Can I, can I interject real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Have you ever heard of a book called America Being the Latest uh, Description of the New World? Uh-uh. It's a book that cost $57,000. We've been reading this. We have uh, what is called a... Uh, $57,000? Yes, yes. Hey, I need, hold on, I need to, I need to raise the prices on my books. <laughs> oh, you gotta understand. Here, look, if you get a chance, type this in. I, you know, I'm gonna type it in, in the, uh, in, uh, in the, uh, What's that special about the book that they charged the fifty-seven thousand for it? Oh, because it shows you the Indians are melanated, and it shows you in color pictures, and it has all the dialogue of all the uh, the, the the colonizers and, 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 and translators that tell you. Yeah, but does it does it show does yeah. it show that the original colonizers were uh, were the black Scots it, and the black Welsh and the black Brits? No. It doesn't, but, but, see, see, but that, see. it wasn't. Wow. It wasn't a description of the colonizers. It was the words of the colonizers and the images of the colonizers describing the Indians. This is why you are a big, big key because everything that has been hidden is hiding that the black man is the British man. And this is the key. <laughs> this is why what the work that you've done. It is amazing. I, I and 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 you know, 
Yeah, okay, so, so this book, America Being the Latest, Most Accurate Description of the New World, there's only three original books. They're held in uh, auction houses. One's in New York, one's in Vegas, all right? This is where you go and, you know, they put on gloves and turn the pages for you. The other one's for sale, and you can buy it for $57,000. Uh, wow. You can get a reprint. Oh, man, that's garbage, you man. Get, Listen, man. This is what it's all about. You know, these institutions, I'm listening. What? It, I, no, this is what it's all about. No, no, no. This is exciting. This is why it, I can't I can't just have one sentence. I'm sure I'm going to pique your interest and you're going to want to say something. Go right ahead. You know what you could do? You know what you could do also? You could set up a speaking engagement and I'll come down and maybe uh, maybe over a three-day period. We could do, we could do the uh, church's version of a revival, but, uh, but uh, we could come down for three days, man. And, uh, how many other days you guys can put together and I can come down and I maybe we could teach for a couple of days. Well, the problem is, is everybody lives all across the country. You know, the best right. thing that could happen is uh, I, if you wanted to, you know, we had Passover last year in uh, in, in in Utah, um, in Barrow County. I think we're going to buy land here in Ohio and have land here in the uh, 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 Ohio. Uh, as we read the Bible, there are three places that we can have it. The plant, the place that has Judah's name, the place that has the Most High's name, and the place that the Most High uh, says is good, and, the, and that was Shiloh. Shiloh is in two places. One's in Tennessee, Shiloh, Tennessee. The other one's in Louisiana, Shiloh, Louisiana. And then, uh, of course, Utah is Judah. Uh, this is where Moses climbed to the top of the mountain to see the promised land. And uh, the place, the name that has the most highest name, if you look, I am that I am translated back into Hebrew is Haya. Haya am is the only word from that uh, that, that gets translated. Ohio is the only place that is, quote unquote, the heart of it all, the place that has the most highest name. That's why the Ten Commandments stone, uh, the Decalogue stone was found here in Ohio. Um, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was. So, uh, it's been mistranslated, though. You know that? Uh, I don't. The, 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 the I, scholars, the so called scholars, they don't know how to use the alphabet. What they're doing is they're taking the square script, the definition of the alphabet, the square script, and they try to go on. See, what happened is that uh, most of the translations that, that, that everybody thinks is accurate, they date back to like 1830, 1850. And uh, they had no understanding of the paleo Hebrew, and so they were taking that square script and using it. The best way I could take, uh, the best way I could describe this is the, uh, taking a, the garage key and sticking it into your automobile trying to start your car. <laughs> so what they done is they took they, right, they took the uh, square script that they use in Jerusalem and trying to translate our fathers uh, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, the, uh, the uh, stone steel, the Moabite steels. Uh, and the other ancient doctors, they cannot do it. And so, but God's blessed me, and I have the ability, I can read, write, and translate uh, ancient manuscripts. Right, the rebirth of the language again. Uh, That's exactly what it is. It's the most high. Let me, can, he's, he's, uh, he's being merciful to his people. Other he ain't just giving us back <laughs> our identity. He's giving us back our alphabet because you cannot have a nation without an alphabet. Well, I, 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 okay, so the Bible says they're going to kick the millstone out of heaven. The millstone is how they grind food, so that means there's no more cafeteria in heaven. In the end, the, what, the, the scroll rolls out of heaven, they come down to earth, they beat up all the stars and then punish everybody, and then the ones that pass the test with the Ten Commandments, they get to live with God on earth. God's used to, God, Most High used to say, the children of Israel were my children. Then he said that he rejected the actions that we did when we we blasphemed all the knowledge. So then he said, I'll accept you again if you turn back to me, but this time you will be my bride. That means he's going to take from our children the wives that he approves for himself and blah, 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 blah. So all we have to do is read the Bible. It's all right there. I have three questions left, but I wanted to express something to you. I wanted you to know how serious I appreciate this interview. Now, hey man, hey, forget, hey, you a good guy. I like 
No, no, no. no I'm, Don't worry about it. You can I'm, do this again. I'm a bad guy trying to do good stuff. Okay. <laughs> You're a bad guy trying to be. Hey, don't believe this guy. Listen, 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 listen. listen. I, I want to tell right, you. I want to tell you a story before I la ask these last three questions because these last three questions are really important. I just want you to understand their importance. Cause can I tell you a little five minute story? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So again, I started chasing your book titles it led me to a radio show i started listening to the radio show and there was something interesting going on in the radio show somebody that can cause themselves a more now if you go online and you, that was his name chief song i they don't go by names uh on this radio show they go by numbers okay so just just hear me out real quick if you go online and you looked at rv Bay. Uh, productions and you'll you'll and you read their literature I'm not saying if you agree with their literature if you read enough of their literature they will tell you that they are the ancient Moabites and they go under the title Moors and that they are the master Masons all the Freemasons have to go right, what's, by, the, what's the station called again RV what RV Bay Productions V as in Victor yeah Bay RV8 production bay b-e-y like bay l b e y this is why okay, you, you find morris today using bay title and l title if you know uh okay so, so just hear me out um so the person that introduced these books to this radio channel uh they they, they argued about uh not you know uh doing paperwork to separate from the uh uh, states and this argument led to a lot of information coming out and a lot of pushing against the moors so once i started broadcasting little trinkets from your book without reading your book directly this is when i started to get the death threats so i want you to understand how important this moment has been in my, my life you are the key to prove or your work has unraveled the blacked out history. Now, I'm not saying this is what the book of Daniel is talking about when they change times and laws, wink, wink. I'm saying this is part of what the book is talking about when they say they will change times and laws. It is the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, the pale Africans of leprosy. But this is my opinion. I'm not pushing it on you. I'm saying this to my viewers because my viewers have studied every part of Nebu and Chad because they are languages that are right next to each other and they share DNA. Mm -hmm. If you watch Joe Rogan, uh, Joe Rogan tells everybody, he's a uh, Caucasian broadcaster, that he has more African DNA than most black people on the streets of LA. That is telling you the white man knows they are the yeah. African. When they say that the Mexican has the Neanderthal DNA, and you know the Af Africa theory shows that the Africans slept with Neanderthals. This shows you a bigger picture of the truth. Your key that you have produced is the last key that we need to free ourselves. So, my last three questions. Your last name, have you done any ancestry on it? Yeah, my name, um, I know who I am. Uh, my name, Trace, there's a map in uh, part six and part seven. It shows my, it shows my last name on a map of uh, the Black Scotch. Uh, we, were the, we were the original noblemen of, uh, of uh, so Black you're, Scotland. So you're the Highlands of Scotland, but you can find my last name also in the Bible. Jesus talks about the coming and the fitch. Uh, and uh, when you go back and read Wycliffe's Bible, that was uh, published in 1380 AD, uh, when Moses went back to the elders, he told the Lord that the comments would not uh, would not believe him. So uh, my family my family name goes all the way back to uh, to the times when our fathers were in, were in Egypt. Oh, that's very interesting because we just recently met the melanated people with the last name Nathan from the uh, the King's Round Table of David. So <laughs> this is amazing. Ah, great to meet that's you, Mr. Saying. Cummings. That's what, that's what this system is designed to do. This system in America is designed 
that if you uh, if it's designed to keep you so busy, you know, with employment, yes. trying to feed yourself uh, these jobs, that you never have time that you never have time to do the research to figure out who, who, who exactly am I, what's going on. And that's what the Negro Question Book Series does. It does the work for the, uh, the reader. You don't have to go do the research. All you have to do is sit down. And you, can, uh, you can use a computer. You get your computer, sit down, read the book, and uh, do your research while you're drinking a cup of coffee. You, when you get through, you'll know the truth. Oh, can I, can I inject? Um... Hold on for a second. Viewers, ladies and gentlemen, I've already shown you there's a man that did his ancestry online, and his, his melanated man, his last name is Christmas. He is the German. I, I showed you. I told you. Oh. Is that, is that, but is that not what Benjamin Franklin said? But, yeah, but we, 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 Franklin said the same thing, and I'm telling you. And what did uh, Thomas Jefferson say? Thomas Jefferson said that when he went down, he was in France. When King, I think it was King Louis the Fourteenth, when he got his head cut off, or the Fifteenth, he said that he was at the Basile. He saw sixty thousand Frenchmen of all colors. And uh, uh, William Penn described uh, the Black Europeans. He said that he saw Black Indians, and that uh, the Black Indians were putting up their uh, fat uh, on their skins, and said that they were darker than any Gypsy that was in Europe. So. The reason, uh, the reason why the people don't know the truth is because they will not allow, they allow history into the classroom, but they will not allow the eyewitness in their school system. Well, this is where we get the German Queen Charlotte that put on the books the, the sundry laws. Right, right, they're trying to make it seem like that's so, uh, like that, uh, that's an anomaly. Uh, the Germans are a black king. In fact, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to get out of here. Uh, uh, when uh, King George, King George was a black German Hanover king, and it's it's a known fact that the Germans were black. But there's there's another uh, uh, jewel that you guys gonna get. Let's listen to the show to that. Uh, king, there was a the, uh, when the Roman Empire fell, the, the the next empire that picked up the pieces was called the Black German Holy Roman Empire. And when the thirteen colonies rebelled against Black King George. He had the black German mercenaries called the Hessians or the Hestas. They occupied, and I want y'all to hear this, this black German uh, army occupied the 13 colonies south for as long as eight years. And it's not even in your history book. Wow. Okay, so that actually covers, uh, is there any section of your series that you're true? That's in the memoirs. That, that's in six years. I think that's only in part seven. Wow. Uh, final question. So, uh, have you have you had a chance to read the Seven Seal? I am halfway through it. Okay, I'm, what uh, do you think about it so far? Um, I'm up to page sixty-two. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, believe it or not, we've come to some of the thoughts uh, 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 that you have. Um, we don't agree uh, uh, on some things. Uh, I I I didn't actually want to talk about it at all uh, uh, because so I have. Like I said, we can uh, no, no, no. come down and uh, hang out with you for a couple of days and see what happens. It's, it's uh, you know, that's it. some subjects. Let's just you know, let's kick it. Let's let's let's, let's uh, look okay. at look. We need to, we can have a round table. I would, I, I would love to do that. I just don't know that we'd have that many viewers or participants in this well, actual I'm, location. I'll just come hang out with me. I'll just come hang out with you. Oh, that, yeah, that's you. great. Yeah. Yeah, we'll come hang out at yeah. Starbucks somewhere and then just sit down and just, you know, like we say in Chicago, you know, chew the fat. Um, so just I, I'd like to ask you this question. I think you already answered it. Are there any sections of your series that you truly want the public to know? That uh, that was one of the questions. Well, you know, I just you know just get the whole series, man, because it's, it's nothing like it. I respect you that. You know, there's a lot of people trying to imitate the work, but they can't because I got I put my signature on it. There's some things that they just cannot imitate, and uh, I've written uh, a variety of stuff. So you you know, right. but what I will say is this: you know, purchase the Negro Question Book series, and then you know what, purchase it through one of your friends or a family member because. Uh, this is the only thing that uh, the, the Bible says, uh, you should know the truth, and the truth will set you free, and that is real, man. It says but other, than that, other than that, we will be another generation of, of so-called melanated people 
But what do we do? We come here, we work a job, pay taxes, marry, get married, have children, then we die. Bond. So we don't even know that we came. Bond slave, right. No, your books are affordable, man, uh, uh, sir. This, 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 you know, it's not, I back you on that. Buy the series. Yeah, I and mean, then, you know, you only got a couple of them that's kind of high, but those books are high for a reason. You know, like, right. uh, we got two of the Bibles, I think they're going 50 bucks a piece, but those books are high because you can go to, you go to church every Sunday or every Saturday day, you got a book with a bunch of uh, Europeans in. These are, these are white publishing companies put pictures of white Moses, white Jesus, and they don't have, they can't even tell you where they got the pictures from. Right. But the pictures in uh, the Negro Question Bible, they come from, uh, uh, they have validated, accurate images of Moses, Abraham, Lot, King David, uh, the tribe, uh, Nat, uh, uh, four or five of the tribes, Naphtali, Levi, Judah, and uh, we have references. And so it's a, it's a kind of Bible, if you took your Bible to church, Dude, you got a better book than the minister. Oh, I, they, they threw me out of church twice, man. I, I recorded it and broadcasted. That's how I got some of these viewers, man. Like, well, I like that. Like, I like that. Hey, yeah. keep up the good work, buddy, because if they throw you out of church, I mean, you're doing something right. <laughs> final, final, final question. Final question. I appreciate your time. Second Exodus. Any thoughts on Second Exodus? Uh -huh. Exodus. Second Exodus. Well, what about it? Uh, do you have any thoughts about it? Uh, you know, there's a scripture that says one day that uh, the, the, the children that uh, I took out of Egypt will no longer call me uh, he who took them out of Egypt, but he that brought them out of the land of the north. The Lord will call them what? The Lord. No one, no one would, no longer would we call him the, the, the Lord that took them out of the land of Egypt. Well, uh, he's, he's talking about another day. You know, it's going to come a time. Uh, it, the Lord's going to recover his people again. That's already understood, that the people are going to be recovered again. And he, and But uh, I think it's alluding to the fact that, uh, and I think it's in the book of Amos, when the Lord makes the comment that uh, they won't call him Ishi anymore. And Ishi in Hebrew, Ishi in Hebrew was a Hebrew term. It should have been Yish, uh, the, 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 the scribe when he uh, translated it. He translated with an I as opposed to the Y because Yish or Yish B was a, a nickname of all Yishraelites. Uh, 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 we've actually went on an in-depth study of that. See, uh, and, and I, this is what I mean. Uh, I, I, I respect your work. Uh, I, I, some things. I, my studies don't line up with uh, the Hosea is 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 we actually don't use the word Lord because it it, it actually translates to Baal and and in Hosea it says you'll no longer call me Baal you'll call me Ishi and actually from, yeah, check from this out, but, but sir I'll check this out once <laughs> if you go back but the reason why I can't be the reason why I can't be is that was because there's no I in Hebrew so so. Uh, when you look at that translation, this is a we could have this is could be another show. When you look at that translations, when you you gotta back out of the I. If you back out of the I, the only letter that fits is what? Is the Y. Right. Yeah, but see it's 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 if there's something else that's there. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, cause because I'm trying to say I'm trying to bring it up on screen for everybody because we actually yeah, read. Yeah, you think that, right? do, you, do you see what I'm saying now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but if you look at the Hebrew alphabet, there's no E. Right? What letter is it that there's no there's no C? C is not Hebrew. E is not Hebrew. I I is not Hebrew. I J is not Hebrew. I agree. So there, it can't be I. It but, has to be Y. But it is from listen. There's prophecies that say that. Your children will sleep, and I will pour myself on them. It's all riddles showing you that the the ishi is the yishi from the septu ishi. Right, it's gotta be. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, the septu ishi is what they call the Big Dipper, the pot that is above us in the star system. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Because we had a good shot. Why don't we? Why don't we say this? Uh, this discussion. Yes, sir. For another day. I respect that.
I respect yeah, you. Know, this, 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 uh, this is amazing. We'll be, like, what we'll do is we'll have a private discussion. We'll iron it out, and then we'll come back, and then we'll come back in front of the viewers. Sounds great. How that sound? Well, let's say bye to everybody. Okay. Well, listen, man. Hey, guys. Uh, you know, this was. I really enjoyed the dialogue, and uh, I got. Uh, I'm working on a new piece. Uh, and when it comes out, uh, anybody that's interested. In fact, what I'm thinking about doing is uh, I might be teaching an um, online annual Hebrew course where I teach you how not only to read and write Hebrew, but to be able to uh, translate the Dead Sea Scrolls. You'll be able to uh, read them. You'll be able to read the Moabite Steel. You'll be able to take any ancient uh, paleo Hebrew uh, manuscript and translate it yourself. So, uh, I'm going to keep uh, the brother posted, and then uh, we'll go from there. Other than that, this is Brother Cummins, author of the Negro Question book series. Uh, there's nothing like it on the market. Thank you again. Viewers, enjoy. Well, thank you, man. You're a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Viewers, until the next time, shalom.